If you're an Elementor user, you'll know just how easy it is to use Jet Engine alongside Elementor to build truly powerful websites with relative ease. Jet Engine gives you a lot of control over not only what to display, but also a lot of control over how it all looks. Now Gutenberg users can start to tap into that control with the latest version of Jet Engine. In this brief overview or demo video, I'll show you just how easy it is to get started. Now, if this video piques your interest and you'd like to learn more, let me know in the comment section below. I'll be happy to take a look at creating something a little more focused and in depth in the future. Okay, so let's just get on with taking a look at what Jet Engine 2.7 and Gutenberg can do together. Okay, so we're going to be taking a look at Jet Engine, the latest version, which is 2.7, which has been released today, which is the 22nd of February 2021. And the reason we're going to take a look at this is there's been some more additional options applied to using Jet Engine alongside. Gutenberg, as opposed to being restricted to using it with just Elemental. So if we hop over to the website, flip over to the Gutenberg section, you can see this now gives us more information about all the different features and how we can use them with Gutenberg. So if you're a Gutenberg user, you don't want to have a reliance upon Elemental to do all of these kinds of things, then this is going to be super interesting. Even if not, stick with me because I think you might find this useful in the future. Okay, so with that being said, like I say, just making sure you have 2.7 or above installed, we are good to go. Now I'm going to show you a really, really simple example. We're going to take a look at creating something like this, which is just simply a listing, which we've set up to go across horizontally in a slider fashion. We can click and go and take a look at the details if we want to, but that's not the important thing. We can take a look at how we do all of this inside Jet Engine in Gutenberg. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop over into Gutenberg and we're going to create everything we need. So first things we need to do is come into Jet Engine and we're going to come down to the listings option. So if you ever use Jet Engine alongside Elemental, this is all going to be very, very familiar to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how easy it is to start working with things. Now, let's just go and create a new listing. Posts is perfectly fine. We're going to get our information from posts, but you can grab you know, terms, users, repeater fields, loads and loads of different things inside here. But we're going to keep it really simple. But if you'd like to learn more and you'd like me to take a look at creating something more comprehensive on using Jet Engine with Gutenberg as opposed to with Elemental, please do let me know in the comment section below and I'll take a look at creating something in the future. Okay, so we're just going to call this sample 2.7 data listing just so I can separate it from any of the other listings I've created. And as usual, we've got listing view. You can see blocks is the only option enabled because I've turned off Elemental completely from this setup. So we're going to create our listing item, and that's going to take us over then into a normal Gutenberg page. So we can bypass all this getting started rubbish, and we're now ready to start building things out. Now, I do have a couple of extra plugins installed. I'm not going to use them to start off with, but then I'm going to show you afterwards why they are really useful. Now, we're going to do is we're going to start adding in the various different dynamic sources of information and these are just posts so nothing no custom fields no nothing just normal post data but you can pull in any of that additional information should you want to if you have it created let's add our first block in we're going to scroll down until we find the options that are to do with jet engine you can see they're denoted by these slightly different icons with this sort of green highlight or this purple highlight kind of thing. So one thing I really don't like about Gutenberg is it kind of just starts to lump things together when you start to install a couple of extra plugins and things. So that can get a little bit confusing, but it's pretty much all these options are to do with Jet Engine. So the first thing you want to do is just drop in the featured image for our posts. So what we're going to do is we're going to find that option inside here. We're going to say dynamic image, click to add that in, and you can see by default, it thinks it's going to be the post thumbnail, and it's perfectly fine. Now, if we come over to the right-hand side, you can see there's our block, and there's all the information that we have associated with this dynamic data source, in this example, a dynamic image. We can change things like the source, so we can choose from any of the sources available, the post thumbnail, user avatar, options, profile pictures, and so on, anything that's relevant to the data you're using. In this example, we're just dealing with post data, so post thumbnail is perfectly fine. You can, if you're using dynamic data, you can just use the post meta field key. So if you created custom fields using Jet Engine, you can reference those custom meta fields inside this second option. We're not going to worry about that right now, but like I say, if you want me to cover these kinds of things in more detail, just let me know in the comments. Image URL prefix, if you want to add something inside there. Then we've got the sort of options for what source image do you want to use? Do we want to use the thumbnail, the medium, the large, and so on? So depending upon the size of the layout you're going to create, choose something that's relevant. We're going to set this to be medium large so it isn't massive. Linked image basically just means it's going to link it through to the post 
by default, which is what we would like it to do. But you can change that source if you want to, and you can see you've got a ton of extra options inside there. But permalink is what we want for this example. And again, we've got prefixes this time for the URL. You can open it in the window, you can add any relevant attributes, you can do all those kinds of things, including dropping in a fallback image if for any reason you don't have an image uploaded with the particular post. So all those things are pretty cool, pretty obvious. Jumping to advanced, you can see we can add any additional CSS classes and you can see there's already some information placed inside here. Okay, so that's the first bit of dynamic data. Let's add some more in now. So let's just search for dynamic. And we're going to just choose dynamic field for this example because we want to reference the title of the post. And again, you can see if we take a look on the right hand side, our block now gives us a ton more options. Now, if for any reason you don't see this, all you need to do is select any of these blocks. And if you don't see the options on the right hand side, you can simply click the block, click the three little dots to view more options, and then it'll say show more settings. That will then open up the right hand panel and show you all the extra options inside there. So if you don't see what I'm seeing, just do that. Okay, so there's our, uh, our title, that's perfectly fine. And again, you can see we've got all the sources you'd be used to coming from Elementor using Jet Engine. And if you don't use that, you can see we've got post terms, user object data, metadata options, and relationships and things like that. Jet Engine has a ton of power underneath the hood. We leave it set as it is, but if you wanted to change this to something else based upon that source, you can see we have tons of extra things inside you, post ID, title, so on and so forth. So we're gonna just come down and just check if it's anything we want to configure and change on here. And you see we've got things like, do we wanna hide this if the value is empty, which is quite useful if you have you know, information that might not always be required as part of a post, you can set this to only display if it has content inside there. Now you can even filter the field output and customize the field output. So if we go to the filter option, we've got this callback setting. And inside there, you can see there are tons and tons of different options. So this is where we can format the data that we're going to display. So if you were displaying a date and you wanted to display it in a certain format, you can do that. You can do things like get post title, embed a URL, make things clickable, tons and tons of options inside you. For this example though, we're going to leave that as it is and we're just going to say, we'll uncheck that. If you want to customize your field output, you can do that. And then simply you can type something before this little macro shortcode and that will come before your title. And if you wanted to place something afterwards, you could place it afterwards. Really intuitive, really simple and easy. Again, the advanced gives us options for additional CSS classes. And as again, you can see, there's already some data inserted into there. Okay, we put our title in. A couple more things I wanna drop in there now. So we're gonna add another block in and we're just gonna do a search for dynamic. And we're gonna just choose the dynamic meta. We select that, you can see this pulls in the date that it was posted who the author was and any comments. But you can see it doesn't make a lot of sense because, well, there's just this random set of words. So what we can do is we can prefix or suffix any of these or we could enable and disable any of them. So for example, the date is enabled and we could just say posted on. And you can see that now puts posted on February the 8th, 2021. We can change and we put a suffix at the end of it. If we wanted to, we can change the format of this and we can say what this would link to. So you can see it links to the archive. In other words, any other posts that were posted on that date will be listed inside an archive. And you can set that to do that or you can just have it go to the post or do nothing at all. So let's just set that to be nothing. And you can see now that turns it from being a link into just a normal block of text. Enable the author. Well, let's do that. And we're just going to say bye. There we go. So that's now by Paul C. And again, we can make that a link if you want to, but let's just set that to none. And finally, we're going to just disable the comments. Okay, so we've now put in some metadata. And the final thing I want to do is just drop in a link we're going to use as a button. Okay, so let's just go in and we're going to just say we want dynamic again. And this time we're going to say dynamic link. We'll click on that. That puts in what it considers to be the right thing, which in this example is the title, but we can change all of that. We can change the source. And again, you can see all the options inside there, but permalink is fine for this. We don't want to use the label. And again, that's using one of the jet engine macros. And you can always tell the macro because they're surrounded by the percentage sign. So we're going to just take that from there and we're just going to put in read more. And there we go. So we're not going to worry about prefixes or anything. We can add an icon if we wanted to. You can add whatever you want on there, but let's just leave it as it is. And we're going to click update. So we've now created the basic template for an individual item inside our listing. 
Now, if you've never used listings before, I do have some videos on how to set this up and how to work with it. They're based on Elementor, but it all uses the same kind of technology. And take a look at that if you don't understand it. But basically, all this is, is this individual list item, this part of the WordPress loop, and then this will be just replicated with different data for each of the posts inside the listing we're going to create next. Okay, so with that being said, let's come back out of this. And now our listing is completed, our sample 2.7 data listing. We're gonna go into pages now, and we're gonna add a new page in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just put this, I'm gonna call this carousel. We'll just publish this page so it's all saved. I'm gonna say publish on there. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna to click to add a block in and we're gonna do a search for listing grid. And there we go, there's our listing grid. So we're gonna select that. And now you can see it says, please select a listing to show. So if you've created more than one listing, they'll be listed on the right hand side. And what we want now is the sample 2.7 data listing we've just created. And boom, there's our listing created for us. We can now set up things like the number of columns. So we can say we want this to be two columns. How many columns on a tablet? We'll set that to be two as well and one on a mobile. If you want to set this as an archive template, you can do that. If we enable that, you see that now becomes an archive template. But we don't worry about that. We're going to leave that as it is for now. Number of post six, that's perfectly fine. If we keep on scrolling down, you can see we've got some more options on how the data is going to be shown to us. We can also do things like enable lazy loading. So if you have a lot of posts with images and things, you may find it useful to lazy load after the first couple, and that way it reduces the amount of load. So you should find your page will just load that a little bit quicker. If you enable that, you can see you can choose an offset value on there, but we'll leave that as it is. You can set this to masonry grid if you have different heights, all those kinds of things, and you can force equal column height if you want to as well. Then you've got things like load more. Do you want to use a custom post type? If you do, what custom post type do you want to use? Tons of options available. But at its basic form, that's how we can set things up. Now, if we want to change this to be a slider, we can come down to slider settings and we're going to say enable the slider. And you see that now converted into a slider for us. So pretty cool, pretty easy. How many slides to scroll? You can set this up to be however many you want at a time. All really easy to do. We'll add in the dots navigation underneath. And if you want to add autoplay into so it automatically loops through, you can do that. And you can change the effect, whether it's a slide or a fade. And if it's an infinite loop, so it'll just keep on going round, no matter how many posts you have as part of this. So that's the basics covered. Let's take a look at this to see where we are. And let's see what else we can do after that. So let's preview this. And we're going to preview in a new tab. And there we go. There's our carousel. You can see we can click through two slides at a time, and it'll keep on going around and around and around forevermore. So that's working perfectly fine. So let's go back to our page. Okay, so what else can we do? Well, at the moment, we just kind of created something really, really basic. But let's just say we wanted to apply some filters or queries to this. How can we do that? Well, Jet Engine gives us tons of options to do that. And we can filter or query whatever term you want to use is the same thing by lots of different values. You can see we've got post query, term query, and user query. So let's just say we're gonna do something like a post query. We're gonna expand that out, and you can see this gives us now a couple of different blocks. We want the meta query relation that we can choose between and or, the typical qualifiers you normally used to see in, and the same goes with the tax taxonomy query. You can use and or, and you can set a post query. That kind of sounds a bit complicated. So how can we do it in a lot simpler fashion? Let's just say add a new item, and we're going to select this and we're going to say post and author parameters. So now we're given a much easier looking box. Now you might be thinking much easier, Paul, that's very subjective. But the reality is you don't need to fill all of this out. You can just basically fill the most simple thing that you want inside there. So at the moment, we've got posts and authors and so on. And we want to basically filter this on the author. I've got two authors set up on this site, myself and a test author. So what we need to do is scroll down and says posts by author and currently it says any author we can expand that and we can say we want to choose a specific author id and now we just need to put in the author id so for this example i'm author number one and my sample is author number two so what we're going to do is we're going to say let's just set this to author number two which has two posts associated with it so we're going to do that and you can see that now changes to two different posts so we'll update this like we just done We'll then preview it again in a new tab so it's completely fresh and you can see the arrows are gone now because we can't navigate anywhere else because there are only two posts available for that particular author let's hop back over now and let's change that to author one which is me and i've got about four posts associated with it the arrows come back we'll just simply 
save this, update it, hop back over to our test page and refresh. And you can see now we see different posts, the arrows are back and we get four posts at a time. So really quite simple on how to do it, but you can stack these on top of each other so you can add extra queries. You can build up quite comprehensive and complex queries using Jet Engine. But again, that's beyond what I want to cover in this particular video. Okay, so that's covering the basics. So now we've created this carousel. We've taken a look at how we can do post queries and things like that. I don't want to bog us down with tons more things there because I think it's useful to experiment with some of these different kinds of queries to get an idea of how they work and how to get your head around all those kinds of things. But it doesn't really look that great at the moment. It's okay, but you can't tell the heading from anything else. So how can we change that? Well, luckily for us, those lovely people over at Crockerblock have made Jet Style Manager one of their previously paid plugins totally free. So we can now use that either with Elementor, if we're using Elementor, or with Gutenberg. Now the Gutenberg version is still a little bit limited in what you can do. So there are some limitations. And I would generally recommend to install something that gives you more control over blocks inside Gutenberg anyway. And I've already done that and I'll show you how we can use that after we've taken a look at Jet Style Manager. Okay, so now we've seen this, let's just come back out of here. And we're gonna go back to our Jet Engine listings because that's where we need to make these edits. We need to make the edit to the actual listing template we created initially. So this is where we are at the moment. So first of all, let's take a look at the image itself. Now, if we come over and click on this little paintbrush, this is our block style, which is part of that plugin. And as you can see, it is kind of limited on what we can do, but it still gives us more control than nothing at all. So we can say we've got border type, for example, we can change that. We can put a border around the outside edge of our picture. We can change the color of that border. We can do all those kinds of useful things. And we can set how big that border is going to be. So let's say two pixels, for example, and then just choose a color, for example. And there we go. So it takes a couple of seconds, update, update it. We can change the width on any of the sides on there. And we can change the style to things like dotted and double, you know, all the normal things you'd expect to see as part of style and things like that. We can adjust the alignment of this all those kinds of really simple things. So not a lot you can do when it comes to the images, but there are some options there. So that is kind of useful. And you can do things like border radius, for example. So let's just say we want to put a border radius on there and we'll say, we're going to put an eight pixel border radius on. So give that a second and then we go, there's our border radius. So it already looks a little bit more interesting. If we click on the text, which is our title text, we want to change that. And we come over to the right hand side again, you can see now we have controls for things like the colors and so on. Let's just say we're going to set this to this blue color and we'll change the font size to something like 22. And you can see we've got the normal values, the pixels, the M's or M's, the viewpoint width and so on. Your line height, you can set that, spacings and things. You can change the font family and so on. And we are kind of still limited. We're not using any of the options for things like Google fonts with this option. But we'll say let's just choose Helvetica as an example. We'll set that to be a thinner font. And we'll just say we want to set that to all uppercase. And you know, you can do things like that. You can change your content width, your field content alignment. So you want to make that centered, you could do that. You know, there's all different options on what you can do. You can adjust your padding, your margins, your borders, your border radius, any icons. So there are a lot more options inside you should you want to tweak and edit the styling. Same kind of thing goes then when we take a look at the metadata. Again, you've got all those options to change the styling. So let's just change this over so it matches and we'll say Helvetica again. And we'll just say the font width, let's set that to 500, make it a little bit more bold, and you make that 600. Hopefully that'll show up, that's a bit better. And you know, you can change all these things. We come down then to what we're gonna set up to be our link. If you wanted to make this look like a button, you could do that. We could set a background color on there. So let's just say we'll choose this blue color, change our font color to white, and we'll just change our font family over again to Helvetica. Scroll right the way down to the bottom, so we get to the options then for things like padding. We can unlink this if you want to, and we can set then the padding different on all the sides. So we'll say, let's just set 10 top, 10 bottom, and 20 left and right. You can do that, and you can adjust the padding based upon the different kinds of devices as well. So you can see you've got your mobile, your desktops, your laptops, those kinds of things. So you can adjust things on there, and you know you can change things like your border radius. So let's just say we'll soften that off a little bit. We'll put four pixel border radius on there. And again, if you want to unlink this to create different border radiuses on different sides, you can do that too. Add icons, all those kinds of useful things. So now if we just update this and we take a look at our page now and we'll refresh that, 
you can see now we've made some changes. Still doesn't look great because we haven't adjusted the spacing and so on in there. So you can get stuck in, you can make tweaks and you can do all those kinds of things. But what I would generally recommend is to install something like Stackable. Now Stackable is, there's a free version and a paid version, but just using the free version opens up tons of extra options for us. And one of the things that I really like is the ability to put containers around things and then be able to style that container. So if you've ever created a container for your items inside Elementor, then you put things like drop shadows and things and outlines. This is a really simple way to do it inside Gutenberg itself. And again, like I say, totally free option. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to add options in and we're going to just do a search for container. And you can see there's our container option. So we're going to click on container and that now places that underneath everything. Now that's not what we want, but what are the other plugins we're taking a look at, which is this option for block navigation, which again is totally free, allows us to easily see the stacking order of everything that we've got inside you. Now, yes, you can do that by taking a look up here at the list view, but this gives us the easy ability to be able to visually drag things around. And then we can just say, we're gonna place all these items inside the container just by simply dragging them into the right-hand side. And you can see that indents places it inside the container. And we now have a container placed with everything inside it. But now we also have a ton more option for the container. So we can click on that and you can see we've got show more settings and now we have lots of options. We can choose between a plain or a basic option. You can see we then have lots and lots and lots of styling options. And if you haven't set up styling inside Jet Theme Styler, you can actually do it inside here. So you could easily just set all your styling and your spacing and everything inside the stackable settings option. So really easy to do. Tons of options inside here. We can set the height. You can see all those options. You've got advanced inside there. You've got just an abundance of options. So if you're coming from something like Elementor or Divi or Beaver Build or anything like that, where you've got all these options for your margins and your paddings and you know colors and drop shadows and all those kinds of things, this is gonna feel a lot more familiar. It's still not perfect and that's not down to Stackable or any of the plugins we're talking about. It's more to do with Gutenberg itself and the way that it kind of operates. It's still a little clunky in my opinion. However, you can easily start to configure and style everything the way you want. And if we update this now and hop back over, you'll see we should have a border around each of these items and we can just go back in and we can start styling everything inside there. But that's kind of what I wanted to show you, how you can take the Jet Engine 2.7 and how you can use that very easily inside Gutenberg now and have a ton of options available to you. So I would definitely suggest if you are a Gutenberg user and you have Jet Engine, or you're looking for a really simple way to start adding dynamic listings into your design portfolio, take a look at Jet Engine itself. As you can see, $26 from a single site, that's pretty good pretty powerful. And then you can combine it with the various different tools you've taken a look at today to create something truly powerful and as unique as you want to make it. That's how you can start to harness the power the jet engine brings to the table in Gutenberg. Now, if you'd like to learn more, take a look at the video that's going to pop on screen right now on using jet smart filters with Gutenberg to open up even more potential. Now, as always, all of the applicable links are in the description below. And if you've made it this far into the video, well, why not give that thumbs up button a click? It really does help me out. While you're at it, if you enjoyed the content, why not also click the subscribe button and slap the bell icon. But if you didn't get use from the video, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice as that seems to work pretty well too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts and until next time, take care.